This station is using Breakaway One. Hi, I'm Leif Clayson at my workstation this time, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how Breakaway One can be used as a standby, near seamless backup stream receiver with diversity delay as a failover for any other audio link, such as a satellite feed. We're gonna keep it simple in this video. The primary source is going to be Livewire, from the same Breakaway 1 that will be encoding our backup stream. This way, we can simulate loss of primary audio just by turning off the Livewire send. <clears throat> this will have the same effect as any STL failure. All we'll have to go on is plain old silence detection. We're not gonna cheat and detect loss of packets, cause that wouldn't help us anyway. The standby backup stream receiver would still need time to connect to its source. What will help is diversity delay. We're going to delay our live feed, so we'll have some lead time to get the backup audio up and running. That will happen inside Breakaway 1 at the destination side. That's it actually, this is the only slide. Let's get to it! The background music you're hearing is coming from the monitor output in the destination side Breakaway 1. As I mentioned earlier, our main input for this setup is Livewire, in this case channel 17505, coming in from the other machine here. We'll simulate loss of audio just by turning off the source. As you could see and hear, we don't have a backup yet. Our backup is going to be a standard Icecast Shoutcast stream, HEAAC at 32k. I picked this low bitrate not because it makes a good backup STL, but rather because it doesn't. The audio change will be obvious even if perfectly time aligned, and there's so little raw data that it makes accurate alignment very difficult without actual synchronization, which Icecast and Shoutcast, based on HTTP, of course don't provide. That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? So, both of these challenges ought to make for an interesting demo. We'll use the built-in server for simplicity. Burst on connect, uh, 7 seconds. We'll want the receive buffer to fill up as quickly as possible, so we'll have more time to fine-tune our delay alignment. Now, let's set up our backup stream receiver on the destination side. We'll need to use the secondary stream receiver, because that's the one with the standby feature. The URL is set to point directly at the 32k encoder. Let's do 8 seconds of buffering. A little more than the burst on connect length, because the burst itself won't be instant. And it'll take longer to stabilize the receiver if the burst lasts too long. Now we set the mode to ON, and the stream receiver will start streaming as soon as it's ready. That was a big jump, nowhere near in sync. We can use two oscilloscopes to help us line them up. For the first one, we'll go with the pre-stream receiver patch point. This will show our main input audio at all times. For the second one, we'll set it to view the input patch point. Think of it as the input of the processor, after all the source management. So, it'll show the stream receiver when active and the main input otherwise, which is live wire in this case. Now, to get them in sync, we're gonna need to delay our main input to match the stream. And for that, we'll need diversity delay. By default, the diversity delay is after the stream receiver. That's not gonna help us here, so we'll move it to before. So, how long will it need to be? Well, that depends. At least as long as the desired buffer, but there's also encoder delay, decoder delay, network delay, all of which will vary both with codec and bitrate. Let's start with eight and a half seconds and see where we are. Okay, main input is still ahead, but we're getting closer. Let's add some more. That's looking pretty good. For the last little bit, we'll use our ears. Perfect. Now we'll need silence detection. With 8 seconds of diversity delay, if we set silence detection to 2 seconds, and buffering also takes 2 seconds, that should leave about 4 seconds for the stream receiver to fine-tune the delay before taking over. Now we can set the stream receiver to standby mode, but let's not forget, persistence needs to be longer than the diversity delay, otherwise the stream receiver will shut itself down before the newly restored main audio has passed through the delay, causing dead air.
And that's the way the square wave tapers. I'm Leif Clayson. As always, thank you for watching. <laughs>